Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today we'll look at an issue raised by a passage in the Bible. Is there something wrong with laughing? First, the verse. And he, lifting up his eyes on his disciples, said, Blessed are ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed shall you be when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Be glad in that day, and rejoice, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For according to these things did their fathers to the prophets. But woe to you that are rich, for you have your consolation. Woe to you that are filled, for you shall hunger. Woe to you that now laugh, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when men shall bless you, for according to these things did their fathers to the false prophets. Luke 6, 20-26 This is a familiar passage in the Bible, and that part about woe to you that now laugh is a disturbing passage. Is Jesus really saying that it's never okay to laugh? Could he be? It seems not, because elsewhere the Bible says that we should laugh at times. All things have their season, and in their times all things pass under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to destroy, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. Ecclesiastes 3, 1-4 to This passage in Ecclesiastes gives us a balanced understanding of the role of laughter, that it has its place in the order of the world, but only in certain types of situations. Furthermore, let's look at the things that that first passage attached to the words blessed and woe. Number one, poverty and richness. Number two, hunger and fullness. Number three, weeping and laughter. Number four, the insults and blessings of your fellow man. There is something that all of these things have in common. Experiencing the range of each of them is usually part of the human condition. Some people are rich for most of their lives, but no one is rich when they're first born. Even if their parents are rich at that point, they don't own a thing. Rich people sometimes find themselves missing meals to get work done, so they understand what it's like to feel hungry to an extent. Weeping and laughter are even more universal, since even the happiest person has times of depression or has to mourn the loss of a loved one, and even the saddest person has been cheered up at some point in their lives. It would be a rare person who's never been complimented for holding the door or running a simple errand for a neighbor, but no one goes through childhood without receiving some insults or scolding. So, based on all of this information, we can know that this verse isn't meant to be taken 100% literally. However, Jesus clearly means to draw a distinction between one group of people and another. As far as I can tell, the only distinguishing point of these verses lie in which side of popular opinion you're on with regard to religion, with the blessed being those who are treated by the world as the old prophets were for the sake of Jesus, and the woed are those who are liked by the world because of their willingness to compromise with it and flatter the ears of powerful people, like the false prophets did when they told the rulers that they had nothing to fear from God. This applies to wealth and fullness because those who are willing to be yes-men for powerful people frequently have an easier time making money and buying food. It applies to laughter in the sense that people who ignore God or deny his will often use laughter to try to dismiss their obligations to God and their fellow man. So, in conclusion, we have no good reason to think that there's anything wrong with laughing, provided it's done at the right time and place and for the right reasons. Next, can heaven provide for the basic needs of human beings? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.